Spoilers ahead. How's it going boys? My name is spider and welcome back to another video guys I got something I got to get off my chest really quickly before we start today's video. <sighs> Here it goes I Am a massive nerd and one of the things that my nerdy selves love more than your mom jokes is Harry Freaking Potter the chosen one will always be the chosen one for that special place in my heart also, Daniel Radcliffe's kind of hot. In today's video, I'll be ranking all eight of the Harry Potter movies, talking about director's decisions they made, uh, things they get good in, did they adapt the book very well, mistakes they made, is it, is it good or bad, um, were some things awkward, which the answer is totally yes. And I'll be putting them all on a tier list right here. And let's hope we can have some civil discussions in the freaking comment session. Uh, yeah, that's totally not gonna freaking happen, but let's hope. The very first movie we will be discussing in today's video is Goblet of Fire. Oh, Goblet of Fire. There are many things I can and will say about you in today's video. You were such a highly anticipated movie, bro. I love the book. It's one of my favorite books in the series so far. It's probably gonna be taken by Half Blood Prince when I start reading that. Mike Newell, he knows what he's doing. He's a good director, and the fact is that he actually directed this movie, I give proper respect to him. But, he just... He totally messed it up. Let's talk about some of the things that they did. Uh, they totally cut, like, a lot of things. Like, the Quidditch World Cup, anything fun in the maze. Winky as a character, Little Bagman as a character, SPW. Well, I see why they cut that. And watching back some of the behind the scenes, it's kind of hard to think that it's like... This is a director to a movie that's adapting a book and reading the book that he's adapting to was kind of a challenge for him. The book is that thick. The book mm. is nearly twice as, as long as any of the other books. Yeah, I read it and the book is vast. It's a great big sort of house brick sized thing. Even some of the mystery aspects of this movie were bad. There are seven mysteries in the entire story of Goblet of Fire. We only get three of them in the movie. And two and three are solved in like the first ten minutes of the movie. So the only mystery that's left in this movie is who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. So it doesn't freaking matter anyways. This movie's got a plot at least. Unlike the Half-Blood Prince, it's got a plot. This movie's decent, but it just doesn't live up to the book. Also, I hate Dumbledore's portrayal in this movie. Harry, right, you put your name in the Goblet of Fire. There are so many good things about this story that is really good in the book. But then the movie just ruins it completely. I can't give the freaking movie anything higher than a D. Just to be honest with you, that's all it deserves. The Half-Blood Prince is one of those uh, movies that I have not read the book to yet, but I hear it's not Rainbows and Unicorns. This was another highly anticipated movie like Goblet. Different director this time, but um, it still sucks. Is it better than Goblet? Yes. Is it twice as awkward as Goblet? Frick yes. Is he getting a higher ranking than Goblet? Yeah, 100%. Look, this movie feels like a dark movie. Like, when you're watching it for the first time and seeing it, it feels like a dark movie. But when you're watching it, like, at from, like, the plot standards, you're basically watching a 2009 romantic comedy that takes place in a school with a bunch of magic people. This movie basically doesn't even adapt the book half the time. This book is the darkest book in the entire series and it, the movie makes it feel like it's literally Sorcerer's Stone all over again. And we were coming off one of the greatest movies we've seen so far. So I was super excited to see this movie and to be like, oh yeah, this is a lot better than I expected. But um, yeah, that didn't freaking happen, did it now, Yates? Don't even get me started on that awkward freaking kiss with Harry and Ginny in the room of requirements. I'm not- I'm not even gonna freaking get into it. I'll get into it within a different video. It's better than Goblet, but not that much better. C. Deathly Hallows Part 1 is one of those movies that I love and hate. Don't get me wrong, I love a lot of the things in this movie. Like the battle at Malfoy Manor. Uh, the battle between Daniel and freaking Rupert for Emma Watson's love. The Ministry of Magic scene, the locket getting destroyed. But the problem I had with it was there wasn't enough story in the first part. I feel like Deathly Hallows is part one and part two are split into two ways. Part one being 25% of the story and then part two being se the other 75. I feel like if you evened it out 50-50, it would have been a perfect movie. It didn't leave me unsatisfied like the first two we talked about did, but... It did, you know, kind of 
make me feel like we left a lot a lot of the story out so i'll give it a b it is a good movie it's just the story aspect of it it's just missing a whole lot chamber of secrets is one of these other movies i have a love-hate relationship with it's a good movie everybody hates on this movie for no freaking reason it's just really freaking underrated it's a good story it's a, and it's a good start behind the idea of horcruxes i even have tom riddle's freaking diary the only flaw in this entire movie can i be honest with you is that one scene where the cameraman is very visible and they didn't even try to hide it in editing. So besides that, um... Hey, tier. Sorcerer's Stone's up next, or if you're from the UK, the Philosopher's Stone. To be honest with you, one of my favorite stories of all time in the Harry Potter series. It was my favorite book for a long time. It's my second favorite book right now, because, you know, Goblet of Fire. I love this book. I love this movie, and it perfectly adapted the book so well. Even though it's like a 300-page book, like... This was super amazing, it was perfect, and it was a, one of the best intros to any franchise you will ever see that's based on a book. My one flaw is where is Peeves? Y'all got the scenes, where is Peeves? Other than Peeves not being there, first S tier. Prison of Azkaban is also one of these movies I have a love-hate relationship with. I either really hate this movie or I really love this movie. A lot of fans hate it for some reason, and I don't know why. I have a couple reasons why you, sh why you can hate it. Some of my least favorite parts about this movie is that entire night bus thing. I mean, the casting for the guy who said, What you fell over for? is perfect. What you fell over for? And that goofy freeze frame at the very end of the movie. Like, what was even that? This movie decided to take a little bit of a darker, edgier approach, which is kind of given the idea that Harry Potter's not for kids anymore. The casting for both Sirius and Lupin is one of my favorite parts about this movie. Honestly, they did a really good job, and, you know, the fact that they die later on in the series kind of makes me sad. But, amazing work. Um, some of my favorite scenes in this movie involve, like, the Shrieking Shack scene, uh, the Expecto Patronum scene. Alfonso Cuaron did an amazing job on this movie, all I can say. It's not my favorite movie in the series. It was for a long time, but then, you know, Order of the Phoenix took that spot very easily. Prisoner of Azkaban is kind of like a middle-tier movie movie for me, so B-tier. Deathly Hallows Part 2 is one of my favorite freaking Harry Potter movies. It's my top three. It's one of the best endings to a story based on a book. I'm not gonna lie to you. Everything about the movie was just perfect. I mean, there are a couple awkward parts, like the whole hug between Voldemort and Draco but like still it's a really good movie some of my favorite parts about this movie is all the destruction of the horcruxes like the freaking hufflepuff cup and the chamber of secrets and the diadem and the room of requirements the kiss between ron and hermione was so well acted between two actors that have no sexual chemistry with each other whatsoever everything in this movie is just really good except kill my boy fred like why fred why, why, why Fred? Why not Percy? We don't like him anyways. Lupin and Tongs too? What the frick, dude? But still, it's a good move. I give Deathly Hallows Part 1 so much crap for not having too much story in it, but I can't really give Part 2 much crap because, you know, the fact is, is that it's got a good bit of story, and that's kind of what makes this movie really freaking good. So, Deathly Hallows Part 2, S tier. 100%. Final movie we're talking about is Order of the Phoenix, and I've already said it's my favorite movie, and I got many reasons why. It's one of the darkest that we can see compared to, like, you know, Prisoner of Azkaban or Deathly Hallows. Because, like, the actual darkest books in the series uh, are very lighthearted movies. Some of the things about this movie that kind of makes me, you know, wonder how they actually did manage to make this such a good movie is the fact that they were adapting an 800-page book and was the longest book in the series at the freaking time. This is an 820 freaking page book. I'm not even done reading it yet. Also, this is the first movie that Steve Clovis did not write the screenplay for, and you can tell this is somebody else's writing. Also, this is David Yates's creation, which he did an amazing job on this movie. I gotta give props to David Yates for this freaking movie. Everything about this movie was super clean and crisp. Production-wise, plot-wise, everything. Battle of the Department of Mysteries and Dumbledore's Army is some of my favorite parts of this freaking movie. The one thing that I don't like about this movie is the awkwardest crack kiss between Harry and Cho Chang. I mean, it's at least better than the kiss between Harry and Ginny, I'm not gonna lie to you, but you know... What the frick? Even though it's my favorite movie in the series, it's not a perfect movie, but I'm still gonna give it an S tier because... It at least adapted the book to an extent. Even though this is my least favorite book in the series so far, like, 
it at least adapted it better than the actual book. Well, boys, that was my ranking of all eight of the Harry Potter movies. None of these movies are perfect, and there are many things that these movies can go so far to extend the story. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor of smashing the like button. Also, comment down below any cringy moments in the Harry Potter series, because I'm going to be making a follow-up video on this, talking about cringy moments in the Harry Potter movies. I got a couple, and I mentioned them in this video. And if you're not yet subscribed to this channel or even the vlog channel, hit all notifications so you don't miss any upload on this channel. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Comment, like, and subscribe. I'm MXG Spider, and I still don't know how to end videos. Peace out. The one thing is about these movies is that they changed my life in a certain way, but, like, these movies aren't perfect. I mean, no movie is perfect. One thing, I, one thing I just didn't really like about any of these movies is the fact that, like, they cut so much from the book, but they also added so many stupid things. Like, look at Prisoner of Azkaban, for a freaking example.